Well, our day usually starts about three in the morning. You know, we get down here and start unloading the trucks. And as the shuckers start coming in, we start processing, which uh, usually begins about five in the morning. To say that P&J Oyster has been in the oyster business for a long time is an understatement. You know, oysters are not easy to do. Shucking oysters is a hard job. John Popich, a Croatian fisherman, migrated to New Orleans and started the business. Our family, the Sinceris, got involved in the oyster business in 1921 uh, when my grandfather uh, uh, tried to marry my grandmother. He, he, her father told him that uh, he needed to make more money if he wanted to marry my grandmother and keep her in the lifestyle she was accustomed. Founded in 1876, P&J has over 130 years in the business, the oldest in the United States. You know, I feel like uh, oyster water runs through our bloodstream. Through the good times and bad, Al, Brother Sal, and the entire Sinceri family have kept P&J a household name when it comes to premium oysters. This is our life, this is our culture, uh, this is our, what we do. It is a Sinceri. How many sacks a day do you guys put up here and, and hand shuck on Not, a normal day? We used to shuck between 120 and 140 a day. And as you'll see, this is a very high quality oyster, uh, quite different than what you would typically see this time of the year. It's very important to us that we uh, provide our customers with the best oysters available. The season on oysters goes from when to when. But oysters are good to eat 12 months out of the year. Absolutely, it's a myth, and right? Only the R months, it's a myth. It's right? absolutely a myth. You know, the best oysters you're gonna find will run between November and July. Right. And, uh, you know, those first couple of R months, uh, September and October, aren't as good as you know, May uh, uh, and June and, right. and July. Now explain why they're so good in May, June and July. Well, the oysters are still full and at the same time they're salty. The chefs that, I, that we deal with would rather see an oyster that's salty, full and, and firm. Now, oysters come in by the sack and some are tagged for half shell or raw consumption. The rest, well, they're hand shucked and then they go through several processes before shipped out for cooking. How do you get started breaking rocks open for a living? Well, I started working on the oyster boat. That's how I got introduced to the oyster, working on the oyster boat. Like out there, we used to shuck our own oysters to make certain meals there, so I learned to shuck oysters on the oyster boat. On a good day, how many sacks you go through? Well, in my youth, I went through 23 sacks. That was that's the most I ever done within a day. But that was back when I was a youngster and I was really excited about being fast. These days, I'm more, I'm more interested in being a good quality oyster shucker than being fast. But when I was like 20, 22, 23, I wanted to be the fastest sucker around. A good shucker like Mr. Willie can go through a whole sack in 35 to 40 minutes. That's 100 pounds of oysters, and this is how he does it. Man, I don't know what ends what. What, what are we looking for? Well, this is the rear end right here. Mm -hmm. This is where the hinge at. And that's where most oysters shuck, especially uh, one that shuck on the head shell like he's doing. Right, right. They go through here, they press knife it right here. But some, they're working oyster house, they hit it back there to jar it loose. Just to get it loose, mm -hmm. then they go through here and cut the eye out, which the eye is up front though, you know. From the shucker's table, the oysters are then cleaned several times. Right now what we're doing, they, they just shucked a sack of oysters and we're going to do the first process uh, in which we rinse the oysters off to try to make sure there isn't any grit in these oysters. There's so much salt in these oysters, it'll take a lot more than this to get it out. Right. And the main thing is to make sure there isn't any little pieces of shell left over on the oysters. These will be for fried oysters, baked oyster dishes, lots of different things that you'll find at, at the restaurants. Do you charge by the pound? How, how, does, no, the, we, how does it go? We, do it. we want to make sure that they are filled. That's the key. We're selling by volume. A gallon is a gallon is a gallon. When people tell you five pounds, that's not a gallon. 
This is a gallon of oil. This is a gallon. I don't think you can put another one in there. And, and you can. And now this, the next step is we're going to take this and we're going to go into another vat that is ice cold water. This is a, a blowing tank and a chilling tank. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn this machine on in a moment and show how uh, these oysters are processed through the next step. We'll put 20 gallons of oysters in there. We'll blow it for uh, 10 minutes at the most. To make sure that the oysters are as clean as possible when they leave your place. That's right. We want to make sure that they've uh, as little shell as possible. Mostly everything will go to the bottom. These oysters now come out of their second 40 degree jacuzzi into a draining tray. The cleaning process is for an exact amount of time to preserve quality. This doesn't do anything to take the flavor out well, of the oyster. Well, if you do it the right way, it won't. It won't. You, you know, we follow the same way they've done it for a hundred years. Right. And that is to do it this way. And you will maintain that good flavor. Do y'all find a lot of pearls? Well, we do find pearls, and it all happens to be certain times of the year from certain growing areas. And you might find as many as uh, five pearls in an oyster, but they're not anything you can make. No secondary out. market here? No secondary market <laughs> pearls. I was going to come, and if you just happen to throw them out on the street, I'll be there. <laughs> The care to preserve the quality of these oysters even reaches into the trucks that deliver them. Why are these trucks so cold? John, we come here uh, first thing in the morning, turn these trucks on and get them pre-chilled so that when we take the oysters out of the stationary cooler, we want to make sure they're going on a truck that's 33 right. degrees. This is the care you guys take, maybe above and beyond, to keep your product perfect. We don't want to keep them out of refrigeration very long, so it's very important. Refrigeration is key to having a high quality product. From here, where do we go? We're going to be going off to uh, one of the restaurants and delivering the French Quarter in just a little bit. When you get P&J oysters, you're getting them straight for the Gulf, and you're getting them at local restaurants around New Orleans. That's the only place you're going to get them is if you get them in New Orleans. Got to come to New Orleans. You got to come to South Louisiana to get the best oysters in the world anyway. That's it. And make sure they got that P&J stamp. You stamp every one of them? Uh, you can ask the uh, people where they get them from and you'll know if they got P&J oysters just by looking at the quality of the oyster. Next, we will make your mouth water. Jamie Hernandez, Master Chef at Jubin's, will take these oysters to their final stop.